Before concluding, I would like to refresh the concept of Taylor's polynomial series expansion. It's a technique which applies in principle not to every function but to, for our purpose, to any function for which you can take uh, derivatives and allows you to approximate that functions around one point, say this blue function around the point x equals to zero, with a sum of a series of polynomials. And you can start with the with a constant function which takes exactly the value of the blue function in that point, which is the red one. You can continue adding a first order polynomial so that will give rise to a straight line passing through this point and with a proper tangent being identical to the derivative of the function in that point and continuing to summing another term, a quadratic polynomial term, which would characterize a parabola that is going to be tangent to the blue curve and then cubic and then fourth order and so on and so forth. I will run a similar, I will run a video in a moment and you will see that as many terms of these series expansions are added, the less and less error is made by the approximation compared to the original function, the blue one. So constant, straight line, parabola, cubic, fourth order terms, fifth order polynomials, sixth order polynomials, all summed together. Let me run it once more. Let me give you mathematically the expression without commenting, without too much der derivation, without too much uh, uh, brainstorming on it. So, in the course of the classes, we might sometimes be willing to approximate a function in proximity of one point, in this case, for instance, is in proximity of x equals a, in this specific case, and we would do it with a progressive, progressively better uh, approximation or faithfulness. But most of the time we will include just the zero order and the first order. We will actually not consider the higher order terms. These polynomial that a moment ago I was mentioning. And you see that this is a series of polynomial. Here it's a zero order polynomial first order, second order, third order, they're all summed together, they are centered in x equals a, and they are also weighted by terms which are depending on the first derivative, the second derivative, the third derivative, and so on and so forth, calculated in the point x equals to a. Well, there is also some numerical constant, which is the, at the denominator, the factorial of 1, which is 1, the factorial of 2, which is 2 times 1, the factorial of 3, which is 3 times 2 times 1, and so on and so forth. Com compactly, concisely, you can write this as a sum of infinite terms in which you have the n order derivative calculated in a divided by n, which is the generic index factorial, times the nth order polynomial x minus a. What we need, however, is the knowledge that a function can be approximated by uh, a polynomial, 0 plus the first order, for instance, and the first order contains the, if you want, the slope, what I called at the very beginning of module 1, m, like the slope of a tangent, the slope of a line, will coincide with the tangent line to the curve in that point, which is, by the way, the definition of a derivative. Why am I mentioning this concept of the Taylor expansion. I would like to show you that in the case of the linear differential equation, the Euler method becomes recognizable and can be reinterpreted in terms in the spirit of the Taylor expansion. So let me consider the case of a non-homogeneous differential equation which is linear and constant coefficient but with the external driving input being constant for simplicity. Now, if I consider the analytical solution, so here I know the analytical solution, so let me use it. Let me resort to the ground truth. And let me calculate the same for t plus delta t. So this is not an approximation. This is the exact value of the solution at not at the point t, but at the point t plus delta t. And what I do, I simply replace t with t plus delta t. 
I do it here and I do it here whenever T appears I could do it with a uh, word processor with a find and replace operation nothing really conceptually difficult the next step that we are asking that we are considering is to recognize in identify in this uh, terms f of t and we can do it because the exponential of a sum has been by definition broken into the product of the exponentials so you see that here the delta t is not anymore inside is outside and if i look carefully i can rewrite f of t plus delta t as a function of the ft of the value of the function at the previous time so this once more is an exact iteration and you see that here f of t has to be multiplied by just a number delta t is known a is known the exponential of a number is just the number and once more subtracted by the external term multiplied by a number this one minus e to the a times delta t is again a number let me compare this. This is an analytical exact iteration rule to what I get from Euler uh, methods. So this is once more the iterative uh, exact rule that I get from the analytical knowledge of the solution. And this is what a moment ago I provided you or I commented if using the Euler um, method. So this would be the Euler method where a tilde is 1 plus a delta t and where here the forcing terms is u is a constant times delta t how exactly there is this relationship here i don't i didn't use f tilde because this is exact this is going to be an exact uh, um, uh, evaluation of the function at integer multiples of delta t instead in this case the um, it's all going to be an approximation. I would like to understand when and what is the extent, the extent of this approximation. So how is this a tilde related to this? And how is this u times delta t related to uh, these more complicated terms? So this is the ground truth. This is the approximation. If you look carefully and you invoke the concept of polynomial series approximation extended to the first uh, order term so just neglecting anything higher than the first order polynomial you you discover that the exponential can be written around delta t being very small being zero as the function in, in that point so e to the zero being one plus the derivative which is a times e times uh, to the power a time, times delta t in zero it's going to be one times a times delta t so this it looks very much like these r tilde and the other term by the exact same consideration can be considered as a taylor first order approximation you can see that here there was a minus and here there is no minus so there is a perfect uh, matching between the two things so in other words e, the euler method is a kind of first order taylor approximation of the ground truth iterative uh, expression that can be obtained only when you have the analytical approximation. This does not necessarily hold for arbitrary ordinary differential equations, but for the linear case it does, and it can give a rough example of what it means to use the Euler method instead of the analytical solution. In the end, during the course, we will have equations that are roughly linear, although they are not strictly linear, and we are going to use alternatively the uh, iterative methods with the exact uh, values or the first order Euler explicit uh, approximation method.